What do you call an urgent message sent across a parallel network? A parallelogram, like telegram, parallelogram. So we'll be working with parallelograms today. And let's start with the definition of a parallelogram. It is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. And you can see here's the parallel marks on A, B, and C, D, and B, C, and A, D. Now, an interesting thing is when you put a diagonal across a parallelogram, what can we conclude about the two triangles? Well, I can tell that AC is congruent to AC, well, because of reflexive property of congruence. And I can also use this as a transversal between parallel lines. So I know that this angle, CAD, is congruent to angle ACB, and that's by alternate interior angles. I can also say that angle um, BAC or CAB is congruent to ACD, and that's by the same thing, alternate interior angles. Now do you see that how I have angle, side, angle on these two triangles? So I can say that triangle ABC going from the two congruent mark to the opposite end there to the one congruent mark is congruent to C, D, A. Notice how I use the angle marks to line up the right order for my triangle name. And the reason I can say those two triangles are congruent is by angle, side, angle congruence. And then the other thing I can conclude, since the triangles are congruent, the corresponding parts are also congruent. So this leads us to the theorem that if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite sides are congruent. Now let's see if the converse is true. The converse, remember you switch the if, what's behind the if goes to the then, and what's behind the then goes to the if. So instead of saying if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, I now, now say if opposite sides are congruent, then a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Is that true? So I drew this shape here, and it's a quadrilateral, and opposite sides are congruent. Does this have to be a parallelogram? Well, I'm going to go ahead and add a diagonal because I'm very good at triangles. Well, by reflexive property, I know that diagonal is congruent to itself. And you can see that this triangle right here is congruent to this triangle by side, side, side. Then I can go and say, okay, well, angle ABD and angle CDB, those have to be congruent using corresponding parts. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And that means then that AB has to be parallel to CD by the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem. Since I showed that alternate interior angles were congruent, the lines must be parallel. I can do the same thing for another set of angles and show that the next set of lines are parallel. So I can say that the converse is true. If opposite sides are congruent of a quadrilateral, then it is a parallelogram. So the main way you're going to be using this theorem is to show, maybe to solve for lengths of, a, um, of opposite sides. So here I'm saying AB is 2x plus 5 and CD is 4x minus 14. Well, if this is a parallelogram, what must be true for these two? Well, A, B, and C, D are opposite sides. They must be congruent, so their values must be equal. So I set the values equal and solve for x. And I get t uh, 2x is 19. Well, I can find A, B by substituting back into the 2x plus 5. You notice I didn't solve for x. I could have. I could say x is 9.5, and that would work fine. But I'm noticing that I only have even x's, and I'm like, oh, 2x is 19, so I'll just put 19 in there, plus 5, so I get AB is 24. Well, if AB is 24, the opposite side must also be 24. So for further reflection, why do opposite sides of a quadrilateral have to be congruent if the sides are parallel?